And we'll talk more about this uh, throughout the course of the morning. And I do want to also talk with Assemblyman Brindisi. He's coming in uh, today in the midst of, uh, he'll be sitting in a hot seat. Is he on the phone or in the studio, Andrew? Uh, he's on the phone, yeah. Safer that way. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. Could we call in? I, I think we should. Um, okay, so seven three six zero one eight six is our telephone number. Let's uh, review here, um, Christine. Do you have the exact verbiage that mm-hmm. was uh, that was used? I think it's paragraph three or four. Um, uh, yesterday uh, and this week, uh, parents of children uh, who have pediatricians received a letter. From three facilities, um, Utica Pediatrics, Sequoit Pedi- Pediatrics, Sequoit Valley Pediatrics, uh, and uh, the Slocum Dixon Pediatric uh, Unit over there. Each of these, uh, well known, well respected, and highly used by parents in the area, uh, have decided and made a decision that said took them uh, quite a long time to make that they are no longer affiliating themselves with the Mohawk Valley Health System. And that from now forward, or I believe it's July 1st forward, they're going to be um, affiliated with Galasano Hospital in Syracuse. Meaning that they, if your child ends up in the hospital at St. E's or St. Luke's, uh, your doctor won't be showing up there. There will be another physician who's on, on duty that will be there, but these doctors at these three facilities will not. And, by the way, they will be recommending that you instead travel to Syracuse. While it's, they say, while it's a longer trip, they feel it's in the best interest of your child's health care. Boy, that's a, quite a letter to receive. Yeah. That's quite a letter. And I, I'm not sure that even as I read it yesterday, I realized the implications of this. But what does the, what does the exact terminology say? Okay, so on our website, we have the actual copies of the letters from Utica Pediatrics and the Sequoit Valley uh, Pediatrics. We do not have the letter from Slocum. Um, but we're, we were told that it's essentially the same. And the letters are almost identical with a few um, typographical changes and a few pronouns changed differently. But uh, I'm not going to read the entire letter, but it says, We, the pedi- pe- your pediatricians, have always taken our after-hours call responsibilities seriously. Your children may be ill at any hour of the day, and as parents you may have questions and concerns. Our concept of creating a practice caring for our patients has always kept this in mind. We have been fortunate to and will continue to share our call responsibilities with the three groups. So Utica Pediatrics, Sequoia Valley Pediatrics, and Slocum Dixon all share call calls, after hour calls. So even if you're a patient of Utica Pediatrics, you may be speaking with a Slocum Dixon doctor after hours or during an emergency. Then it says, faced with the evolution of healthcare, it is not just happening in pediatrics. In smaller communities, we, as primary provider of your children's health care, have made a difficult decision. As of July 1st, we, as well as our call coverage group, will no longer have privileges at the local hospital system. Utica Pediatrics, Sequoia Valley Pediatrics, and Slocum Dixon Medical Group Pediatrics will not be admitting patients to any of the hospitals of the Mohawk Valley Health System, nor seeing newborns in their nursery. We will still be available for office hour visits, after hours calls, and weekend holiday calls, as will our call coverage group for seriously ill children that require face-to-face assessment or may need possible admission. We will be directing you to Golisano Children's Hospital at Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse. Newborn care will be available through the very capable neonatology service at St. Luke's. If you and your child do seek care at a local hospital, there will be a hospital-employed pediatrician available if needed. We arrived at this decision after much deliberation and after many years of great thought and discussion. This is a major change in our approach to the care of your children. However, we believe that this approach, while inconvenient for some, will lead to a more complete pediatric care for your child. We've met with the physician and administration at Upstate, and they are excited and agreeable to this approach. Our practice will now be affiliated with our regional pediatric center. I mean, this is um, terrible. I just can't, I don't know any other way to describe it except for this is terrible. And um, it, it, to me, it is, and based on the conversations that I've had and spoken with people and Sandy, who called in earlier, this is not a condemnation on the physicians and the nurses and the staff. However, I'm getting, this is a huge, huge condemnation of the procedure of staffing. And and in particular, understaffing. And as Andrew brings up here, there are signs that I've been seeing, and I kind of wondered what they all meant. 
And Andrew, there are a couple different signs that are yeah. all over the place, right? Right. The first the first time I saw them was probably about two weeks ago outside of St. Elizabeth's Hospital in that neighborhood. Now I've seen them um, start to grow. But one of the signs say, um, St. Elizabeth's Hospital, listen to your nurses. And um, then the other one says, smart staffing saves lives. <clears throat> this all seems to tie in, um, uh, don't you think? I think that there are a lot of issues coming together here, and I don't necessarily think that it's just one issue that started this letter. I think that there, you know, obviously there has been some pullback because of the restructuring that led to the creation of the Mohawk Valley Health System, number one. There are staffing issues. There have always been staffing issues, Mm -hmm. some may say, at at least one, if not all three, of the facilities that currently comprise the Mohawk Valley Health System. But I think there's also an underlying um, difference in the approach to dealing with the health care providers themselves by uh, administration there's a, officials. There's a lot there. But let's just be honest, okay, and, and just in layman's terms. Raise your hand if you've ever had to take your kid to Syracuse and you get in and you get out and it gets taken care of. And you actually spend less time driving to Syracuse, going to the facility, getting a little bite to eat, and then coming home. You spend less time than you would if you went to Utica. Now, that is a problem. Um, And it can't, I I don't think this uh, can be ignored. And and clearly, these pediatricians seem to feel, at least my interpretation of this, seem to feel the same way. Tony is on the line. Tony Colon in Utica. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. Good morning. I, I just a couple of comments and observations. Number one, I, I don't know if anybody has seen the lawn signs recently. The red lawn signs that, that read something along the lines of "St. Luke's listens to its, its nurses." Yeah, I, I don't know if it yeah. has anything to do with that. Yeah, we were just uh, other- just talking about that. It's got. Don't you think this all probably has something to do with what's going on? The other thing is that I discovered several years ago when I had to bring. Uh, one of our kids into the ER is that the ERs are, I thought, were uh, subcontracted out to third-party uh, systems. In other words, these doctors that are servicing the emergency rooms may not necessarily be employees of the facilities in which they're working in. So that uh, that's mm, something that's that we want to check into a little further. Yeah, uh, very interesting. But um, uh, Tony, would you agree that the uh, and I don't know if you have young children or pediatric age children. Um, I've got I've got grandkids. Uh, grandkids. Uh, this is a very uh, very concerning uh, point that, uh, and certainly in the community that uh, some of the things I do, I'm concerned about uh, some of the youth that I that I work with, and uh, it's uh, it's something that we should check into very closely and see uh, what uh, what's really at the base uh, the basis for all this yeah. uh, discussion right now. All right, Tony, we appreciate it, and uh, I have to say that um, uh, not only should we look into it, but I think parents deserve. To know the truth, uh, and 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 a, a non candy coated truth, as uh, parents of uh, of children. Two things: one, on the non candy coated issue, yep. it would be wonderful if someone directly affiliated would speak with us on the record. On the record, because we have yep. so much information um, that we're still looking into uh, off the record. Little PR lesson, right? We all know the PR lesson that the less you say, the more other people surmise. Right. Actually, that's a great quote that I think I just came up with. Yeah. Um, Let's, so we should write that down. Let's trademark it. It's a fact. The more you, the less you say, the more people try to figure out, and the more the story, the bigger the story gets. So th- you get in and you deal with it, and you and you make it go away. Otherwise, people. Have we have that inquire line? What's the inquire line? Inquiring minds. Uh, we want to know as people, and it's even worse when you uh, when you when you bring parents into the mix who have young children. Christine with an update now six fifty. Good morning, Christine. <laughs>